Hey everyone, I'm Sam from Professional Music Technology and in this beginner's guide we're talking about all the different types of guitar plectrums available and, excuse the terrible pun, how to pick the right one for you. So firstly, if you are completely new to playing the guitar, what is a plectrum and why do guitarists use them? Well, a pick or a plectrum, whatever you want to call it, is a thin piece of material, usually a type of plastic, that guitarists use to strum and pluck their guitar strings. And they offer a completely different type of tone from playing with just your fingers, allowing for more precision, definition and dynamics in your playing and faster note repetition. As you've probably already seen, there's literally thousands of guitar picks available in all different shapes and sizes. And choosing the best type for you is ultimately going to come down to a personal preference. But there are a few factors that will make some different picks more suitable for specific playing styles. So hopefully we can point you in the right direction depending on the type of music and the style of guitar that you want to play. So the main things that are going to differ from pick to pick are the materials they're made from, their size and their shape and their thickness. In terms of materials, as I mentioned a moment ago, most plectrums are going to be made from a type of plastic, usually even nylon or celluloid. But you can find picks made from lots of other materials, including metal, wood, stone, bone and even felt, with each one offering a different type of tone due to their density and acoustic properties. As you might expect, a felt pick is going to give you a much softer, more mellow sound, which is why they're great for ukulele players. Whereas a metal pick is going to sound much brighter with lots more attack. For example, Queen guitarist Brian May famously uses an old sixpence coin as a plectrum, which is quite a big factor that goes into creating his unmistakable guitar tone. As well as the material they're made from, you'll also find that some picks have some sort of extra moulding or coating to add a little extra grip. Personally, I use Jim Dunlop Tortex picks, which are made from a hardware in plastic called Delrin, which, fun fact, was used as a replacement for tortoise shell, which is what guitar picks used to be made from. Poor tortoises. And these have got a very fine powdered surface, meaning that they don't get as slippery to hold onto at sweaty gigs. Plus, they're finished in bright colours, so when you do drop one, they're really easy to spot. Now, as I've mentioned, most picks will be made from plastic, but when it comes to their shape, size and thickness, there's a huge amount of choice. For most of this video, when I'm using the phrase guitar pick, I'm referring to this kind of thing, a kind of standard shaped plectrum that you usually hold between your thumb and forefinger. But you may have, however, seen some of these things, which are thumb and finger picks, and these are completely different. As their name implies, these slip over your thumb and fingers, allowing you to play finger style guitar parts with a little more attack and volume. So if you are looking to play kind of standard rock, blues, metal and pop guitar, then these probably aren't really for you. But you will find a lot of folky, acoustic, bluegrass guitarists and banjo players using these types of finger and thumb picks. <laughs> Back to our more conventional looking guitar picks though, the most common size and shape looks something like this, which is what I suppose you could call a standard guitar pick. As you can see, it's got a kind of upside down teardrop shape with a wider section up the top for holding it, which then tapers down to a narrower point for plucking the guitar strings. Larger picks than this will give you more surface area to hold onto if you have a tendency for dropping them. And a lot of larger plectrums tend to be more triangular with three equal corner points. So in theory, they should last three times longer as when one of the points starts to wear down, you can just spin the pick around and use another one. 
Smaller picks, on the other hand, are sometimes referred to as jazz picks, but this doesn't mean that they're only used by jazz players. Popular smaller picks, such as the Dunlop Stubby or Dunlop Jazz 3, are made from thicker, harder plastics than a standard pick, and they've also got a more defined point, which is why they tend to be favoured by players looking for speed and precision. So you'll find a lot of technical players across different genres of music using this type of pick, from jazz and fusion to rock and metal. Alongside these teardrop and triangular shaped picks, you may have also seen some more unique looking plectrums, most notably the shark fin design. Now, as odd looking as these are, they actually offer a few different ways of using them. So they're great if you're experimenting with guitar tones and playing styles. They can be used as either a standard pick, they can be flipped around for a dual point plectrum, which really brightens up the tone, especially when strumming on an acoustic guitar. Strumming with the long curved edge gives you a much more mellow tone. Or finally, if you strum with a more jagged edge, you get a really bright, almost 12 string like quality to the sound due to those multiple edges hitting the strings at slightly different times. Regardless of their shape and size, however, the factor that arguably makes the biggest difference to the way that any guitar pick feels and sounds is its thickness. Now, most plectrums are available in a variety of thicknesses or gauges, ranging from super flexible, almost paper thin, up to hard and stiff, with a thickness of as much as two or three millimeters. As a rule of thumb, for plastic picks anyway, a thinner plectrum will usually give you a softer, gentler tone for strumming chords, which is why they're popular with acoustic guitarists, whilst a thicker, heavier gauge pick will give you a more aggressive, louder tone. And as there's less flex in the pick itself, they allow you to play faster notes in succession. So all in all, as I said at the start of the video, the size, shape and thickness of the plectrum that you eventually settle on will be entirely down to what you like the feel and sound of, with most common pick sizes being available in light, medium, heavy and extra heavy gauges with everything in between. Just to illustrate my point, of the presenters here on the PMTV UK channel, I use the 0.73mm Dunlop Tortex picks that I mentioned earlier, and these are kind of medium gauge plectrums. So they're stiff enough to dig in for harder playing, but still with a little flex for softer strumming. Whereas our Dagon tends to favor a much thicker, pointier Dunlop Jazz 3 pick, which suits his kind of rockier, faster playing style. And on the flip side, as she mainly plays acoustic guitar, when she's not finger picking, our Meg likes to use a slightly thinner pick around about 0.5 millimeters for a nice mellow strumming tone. So if you are just starting out, or maybe you want to experiment a little, the best thing to do is just go and try out a few different shapes and thicknesses to see which one works best for your style of playing. Which kind of brings us on to our final point today, and that's how to hold a guitar pick. Now this may sound a little obvious, and most people will probably naturally develop their own slightly unique way of holding a pick, but if you've never used a plectrum before, 
you wanna grip it between your thumb and your index finger with your thumb roughly parallel to the strings that you're strumming and your index finger underneath pointing towards the strings. So if you were to take the plectrum away, your thumb and your forefinger would be making a sort of cross shape. Whereabouts you grip the pick will depend on your playing style. Further back allows for a looser grip and more flex in the plectrum for strumming full chords. But gripping a pick further forwards allows for more control over the plectrum for more defined lead playing and a stiffer attack for more aggression and dynamics. But if you were to watch a lot of experienced guitarists up close, you'll probably notice that they'll constantly be making fine adjustments to their grip on the pick depending on how they're playing. So the key is just to keep practicing until it becomes second nature. So there we go. That's hopefully everything that you need to know to help you choose a plectrum. So if you are just starting out on your guitar journey, I do hope that's helped. You can go and try out a massive selection of guitar picks at any of our PNT stores around England and Wales. And you can order packs of your favorite plectrums as well as other essential accessories at pmtonline.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you did find this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. As always, don't forget to follow us on all of our social channels as PMT House of Rock. Let us know your favorite guitar pick in the comments below and I'll see you again soon.